Let's talk about scaling and root planing. We see patients all the time that have significant supra and subgingival plaque and calculus accumulation. And this results from a patient that does not floss their teeth, doesn't brush thoroughly, uh, just has poor home care. This is topical anesthetic, and we've talked about this in other videos, Lida, a mixture of lidocaine, prilocaine, and tetracaine. And then we spray that same area with hurricane. Then I'm gonna take my aspirator and I'm gonna blow the top gland anesthetic into the tissue. We have a video on how to give painless local anesthesia. But once you place the top gland anesthetic, blow it in with your air syringe, then I'm gonna come back with a 30 gauge needle and sit in this plane, which is pH neutral. Always start with sit nest or pH neutral lo local anesthetic because those anesthetics don't have the sting that lidocaine, marcaine, other anesthetics have. Then I'm going to come back with lidocaine. This is a Verios 350 piezo scalar unit Lux handpiece with a number G2 tip. Lots of water, lots of aspiration, and you just place the tip against the tooth in the sulcus and get after it. Just a very light touch, lots of water. This is an excellent tip and an excellent uh, motor. Just a very light touch, very light touch. It's like you're painting the, in, the sulcus. Now, something I didn't mention, if you're uh, going to anesthetize the incisal nerve on the palate adjacent to the central incisors, once you've anesthetized the, the buckle or the facial, you take the 30 gauge needle, place it right here in the papilla, in the sulcus of the papilla between the two centrals, and again, just tap it and you numb that, anesthetize that papilla and slowly applying a little more and a little more pressure and that will infiltrate through the papilla to the tissue on the palatal side. Then you can go to the palatal side and anesthetize the incisive nerve uh, in the incisive foramen with your 30 gauge short needle and the sit nest plane. But don't do that one from the palate initially. Start on the facial, anesthetize the papilla, and then you can go to the palate and inject into that already anesthetized tissue to numb the incisal, incisal nerve. This two by two is just to keep the water from going up into the patient's nose. Be sure they, they're wearing uh, sunglasses to protect their eyes from the water. But you want to use a lot of water so the tip the high frequency of the tip doesn't burn the tissue or damage the teeth. Very light touch, very light touch. Now, do you premedicate these people with antibiotics preoperatively? I do, I do. Even if they don't have a heart valve issue or have had rheumatic fever, things like that, if there's this much calculus on the teeth, you know there's gonna be a significant amount of bacteremia, bacteria in the blood. So I premedicate them with 2,000 milligrams of amoxicillin or 2,000 milligrams of Keflex. I'm very conservative with antibiotics, but I think in this case, when there is that much calculus, subgingival and plaque, and all that bacteria is going to be getting into the blood, I think you should premedicate these people with antibiotics an hour prior to the appointment. Now, I don't give them antibiotics post-op. I just give them, the, the recommendation is 2,000 milligrams an hour pre-op. Again, we're just painting the sulcus, removing all that tissue with a very light touch. Mandible, same thing. And this handpiece shows you the settings. The motor shows you the settings for endo or perio. So you just, you go by the, the proper setting as far as the, the power 
of the ultrasonic. This is not hard, it's just important that you have a procedure. And like I said, one of the biggest mistakes I think people make is trying to do this without local anesthetic, without local anesthesia. We'll sedate these patients nine out of 10 times because you're giving uh, injections all over the mouth and psychologically that can be problematic for patients. So a little bit of uh, either oral, intramuscular, or IV sedation I think is a good idea when you're uh, providing that much local anesthetic. Now this is a scaler, hand scaler. It's for fine scaling once you've removed the bulk of the calculus and plaque. Then I'm gonna floss, and this is what I'm talking about when I say make a hard C around both teeth. Don't just pop the floss in or they'll jam that papilla and make it inflamed. I want to slide that floss into the sulcus of the this tooth and then go back up and slide it into the sulcus of the adjacent tooth. See the hard C into the sulcus. I'm not jamming the papilla. And you know it's going to be kind of a bloody mess when you're through. So this is just pumice mixed with hydrogen peroxide in a dappin dish with a profi cup, polishing the teeth. Guys, it just looks like it'd feel good getting all that calculus and plaque all the te off the teeth, doesn't it? Then once I've finished, I'm going to uh, place a desensitizer on the facial and uh, lingual or palatal surfaces of the teeth. This is super seal, which is just a dentin block. And just scrub that into the teeth in the gingival one-third. Okay, so pre-op, post-op, same. So there we have it. Scaling and root planning of the mandibular and maxillary arches. Thank you all so much for joining us on this week's episode of The Dental Minute. Make sure you go ahead and subscribe right now and right here. And get excited because next week we're talking about prepping crowns with composite base. Yes, we are, and it's going to be awesome. We'll see you next week.